Historically speaking, the modern human mouth is a disaster. It's a breeding ground for cavity-causing bacteria and in constant need of cleanup. Stop brushing your teeth with fancy fluoride toothpaste for a few months, and you can be sure you'll have a cavity the next time you visit your dentist. For the few hundred years before the advent of modern dental hygiene, that's exactly what happened in the West. As recently as 1968, half of British young adults' teeth were decaying and considered unsound. One out of three British citizens had no teeth at all. There's something wrong with this picture. For almost all of human history, fluoride, floss, and toothpaste didn't exist. So why aren't all ancient skeletons toothless? From a survival standpoint, it wouldn't make sense for animals, humans included, to lose half of their teeth before adulthood. That line of thinking is correct. Human teeth aren't supposed to decay this quickly. Rampant tooth decay is a modern phenomenon. Neanderthals, ancient cousins of Homo sapiens, were prone to things like gum disease, but their rates of tooth decay were extraordinarily low. Remember that rates of dental decay or caries among Westerners about 50 years ago was around one decaying tooth for every two or three teeth. For Neanderthals, that number was one out of every 200. Hunter-gatherer humans show similarly low rates of tooth decay. All of that changed with the agricultural revolution. The cultivation and selective breeding of crops took off around 10,000 BC in the Middle East, slowly spreading to parts of Europe. Regions of Africa, Asia, and the Americas would later have their own agricultural revolutions. This was the start of the Neolithic period. People no longer depended on the migration of animals or the growth of wild plants to survive. They could settle down, divide labor, and build civilizations. But even as populations boomed with farming, the health of individuals often suffered. Human diets ceased to be diverse, now mainly consisting of one or two staple crops. This led to nutritional deficiencies, diseases spread, and men and women shrunk by about five inches. Human height wouldn't recover until the late 1800s AD. And finally, our teeth took a turn for the worse. Tooth decay is actually caused by bacteria that produce acid. Often these bacteria thrive when feeding on carbohydrates. This wasn't a problem in low-carb hunter-gatherer diets, but in farming societies, carbohydrates from crops like maize, bread, and rice stuck to tooth surfaces. Bacteria multiplied and teeth started to rot. The numbers are a bit murky, but in some cases the switch to farming tripled or quadrupled rates of tooth decay. Rotten teeth became the norm for millennia. Primitive picks and hand drills were used, but they didn't work very well. Ancient Romans actually used animal urine to whiten their teeth. Even by the Middle Ages, dentistry was still considered a painful, barbaric practice. Most dentists doubled as barbers or blacksmiths and would simply use their tools to pull out sore teeth without anesthetic. But what really doomed our teeth wasn't bread or corn. It was more dangerous carbohydrate, which stuck more easily to teeth and fueled bacteria growth. Sugar. Initially, sugar was a luxury item, only for the rich. Queen Elizabeth's sugar addiction took so many of her teeth that it became difficult to understand her when she spoke. By the 1800s, slave labor and agricultural innovations made sugar widely affordable. The mouths of the rich and poor now suffered equally. Many people chose to simply have their teeth pulled and opt for dentures made of ivory and animal or human teeth. Human teeth dentures were preferred, but more expensive. In fact, grave robbers in London amassed small fortunes pulling the teeth of the dead and selling them on the black market. But these dentures almost never fit well. For instance, George Washington wore this pair of dentures made of lead and human and animal teeth. As with all of his pairs of dentures, he complained that they disfigured his face and made its jaw bulge out. You can actually see this deformity in Gilbert Stuart's famous portraits of Washington. But slowly, dental care was improving. Over the 19th century, dentists popularized toothbrushes and discovered effective anesthetics. Still, tooth decay was extremely high, so it became very popular for young adults to have all of their teeth pulled and replaced by dentures. In the long run, this saved a lot of pain and money. Thankfully, the advent of fluoride in toothpaste and water by the 1950s helped dampen the effect of the West's high carbohydrate and sugary diet. In teeth, fluoride combines to form a mineral called fluorapatite, which is highly resistant to tooth decay. As a consequence, cavities are becoming more and more rare. But we're not in the clear. 
92% of adults have experienced tooth decay. So maybe the takeaway is that if you're not willing to switch back to a nomadic caveman diet, you should at least remember to brush your teeth. Hey, thanks for checking out this video of History Dose. If you like what you saw, make sure to like the video, maybe even subscribe, or consider donating to our Patreon account.